between Arizona and Oregon at the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas. Capacity, 18,000. But the toughest ticket all day may be here in Burlington, Vermont, the Roy L. Patrick Gymnasium. Capacity, 3,266. Students were here hours before the tip for the last remaining tickets to see who earns a bid to the NCAA tournament. The America East Championship, Vermont and Albany. It is an electric atmosphere here today between the Catamounts and the Great Danes, and we are excited to bring it to you. Mike Corey alongside Brooke Weisbrod, who is right now standing in the heart of one of the more unique atmospheres in college basketball. We want to talk about a home court advantage. Boy, Albany is going to have their hands full with these guys. we got a packed gym. Not only are there no seats left, there's like no breathing room left in this gym. But these guys have brought the passion to the floor, and you have to think that these guys could be the reason their 20-game win streak goes to 21. All right, Brooke, we shall see. And that is it. The nation's longest winning streak right now, held by the Vermont Catamounts at 20 in a row. Finish the America East Conference season undefeated at 16 and 0, 28 and 5 overall right now. The record after a huge dominating performance over New Hampshire on Monday night to earn the right to get to the championship game. 74 41 the final there. Albany beats Stony Brook on the road 63 to 56 to come to Burlington, Vermont. Where they're three and zero oh all time versus the Canamats. Two of them right here in this gymnasium. This is going to be about battle here today with these two, Brooke. You're talking about outside versus inside. Vermont's going to try to take it to the paint, and Albany has two dynamic guards in Nichols and Joe Cremo, who Vermont has to pay a lot of attention to. And here's David Nichols right now. Now for Cremo. Shot clock inside 10. Roley, the first shot, no good. Rebound, Catamounts, Kirk Steidel. Henson, hands off to Trey Bell. Haynes right to the hole, not there. His first shot got the offensive rebound. And a three here by Anthony Lamb. Count it. So Anthony Lamb doesn't take a three from mid-December to almost the end of January. Found his stroke, though, and it's back, and it's better than ever. This guy is on fire. 72% from three in this tournament alone. How outstanding is Anthony Lamb being the freshman out of Rochester, New York, the rookie of the year in the America East first UBM player to do that since 2011-2012. Rebound, Kirk Steidel for the Catamounts. One of the most important things for Vermont, for them, they have got to control the boards. Albany is such a good rebounding team, and Vermont is a patient offensive team, but they have to get the shot they want and then look to attack the glass. Henson shut down by Mike Rowley in the block. Gets it back in the corner, another three, count again. And Peyton Henson, and the Catamount six nothing early. And because Trey Bell Haynes is so adept off the dribble, he can get deep into the defense and then kick it back out. Missed three by David Nichols, offensive rebound. Great Danes, Nichols again, and got his shot rejected. But finally on the hook is Greg Steiner, the junior from Albany for the Great Danes are on the board. They're plus seven for the year. Knowing rebounding is a strong Super Albany, they have got to crash the glass. This is where they score, and Vermont's not going to be a team. They're going to run you out of the gym. They're a very patient, methodical offensive team. Now to Lamb. Saw him from the outside. Here he is working on the block. Keeps it alive. Vermont two for two from three-point range here to start. Could it be three for three? No. First miss by Henson, rebounded by Albany Steider. I'm talking with David Nichols, the point guard for Albany yesterday. He said the most important thing on every possession, we have to get a shot. 
You can't give up shots for turnovers, and that's exactly what they did in this tournament. 18 turnovers against Stony Brook, yet they still won the game. Primo got it back up by half court. Shot clock. Albany doesn't recognize it. It's down to one. They have to hoist it up, and misfire is rolling. And that Vermont defense so good. The pack line, the positioning is right. The help side and communication, they're all there. And that's what makes them difficult to score against. Such a team effort, Brooke, as you talked about. There's so many talented players. Not one stands out in terms of the numbers so much, but it's because of the collective effort that they have done what they've done this season. And here it is. They pretty much swept all the awards in the America East Conference this year. And that's without anyone averaging over 12 points a game. And you look at their stats, and there is nothing that jumps out at you to say, oh, well, Trey Bell Haynes is an obvious player of the year. Anthony Lamb, he's the most athletic guy in this conference. And some could argue, could have made a case. I think you did for player of the year. Right. Well, he's the rookie of the year. and yeah. Probably could have had both if they wanted to do that. But here's Peyton Henson at the free throw line, fouled by Mike Rowley. And it's 7 to 2 Catamounts. Nichols got a double team, fires it up and in through two defenders that time of Henson and Trey Bell Haynes. Nice strong move for David Nichols to re just calculate his balance, really. He started to go off guard there and then picked that dribble up, strong left hand, and squared his chest to the rim. First team America East selection. There's a whistle. An offensive foul is going to be called on Henson. Crowd not thrilled with the call, obviously, here in Vermont, but the Catamounts lead it 7 to 4 with our first timeout. Hot start so far for Vermont. Well, I certainly would have thought it would have been from the inside, but instead, Anthony Lamb, you're going to leave him wide open. That's a mistake. And Trey Bell Haynes driving into the post. He's a great kick out point guard. There's Henson for three. During the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most thrilling models ever, including the exhilarating IS, GS, and RC Coupe. Experience amazing. Do you always put cheese and grooves in your sandwich? Of course, they're chips. Chips plus sandwich equals the perfect lunch. Oh, don't forget the pickle. It's kind of a big deal. Cheese it grooves. Chips made with 100% real cheese. Dang right, it's a chip. It's lunchtime. Stop what you're doing and head to Subway. Because right now you can get the Subway footlong sub of the day for just $6. It's the $6 footlong sub of the day. A great value from a better Subway. I joined the Army in July of 98. I did active duty 11 years and two in the reserve. Our 18-year-old was in an accident. When I called USA, it was that voice asking me, is your daughter okay? That's where I felt relief. It actually helped to know that somebody else cared and wanted to make sure that I was okay. That was really great. We're the Rivera family, and we'd all be with USAA for life. USAA. We know what it means to serve. Call today to talk about your insurance needs. Every L-certified pre-owned Lexus comes with an unlimited mileage L-certified warranty. So you can experience all the confidence you've come to expect from a Lexus. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Champ Week's biggest night begins tonight at 6 on ESPN. Most wins in school history for the Catamounts, 28. First ever undefeated season in the America East. It's been a special year. They want to cap it off, though, with an America East Conference Championship. How do you do that, Brooke? Well, you have to have chemistry. You have to be unselfish. And they certainly have it this year, don't they? Well, they do have it this year. They didn't have it last year. Coach Becker called them out in a press conference. So this year, to fix it, you've got 10 guys from this team living in one house. Yeah, that's right. They all live there. you got to put your name on the milk. 
you got to put your name on your cereal because there's no stealing food up in here, okay? Because if I'm living with people, you got to make sure you're contributing, you're cleaning up. I mean, how many different kind of bread do you actually need in the house? But They're ten, good right? Ten separate bedrooms, so they don't have to share rooms. But your my question, I'm sure, it was the same. Who's cleaning up in there? It's that guy right there, 35, Peyton Henson. He's the neat freak. They said everything's got to be in order, in line. He's the one that cleans up mm -hmm. some stuff. That would be me. I, I me, can't me handle too. a dirty kitchen, yeah. dirty bathroom. Nope. That's definitely me as well. Everybody's got to chip in. And I hate it when somebody kind of moves something just to be funny and, and tick me off. You know what I mean? They do it on purpose. Oh, you know? that's they, know. Extreme. they know. <laughs> they know. They know that Mike's going to put it back in line. Albany here down by three early in this first half. Couple of contested jumpers, Catamounts defensively too. Talk about the offensive plays by this team. They do it well defensively also. This is Dre Wills who gets inside. He's the defensive player of the year, but showing his offensive skills here. So, so far we've seen Anthony Lamb hit a three, Henson hit some shots. And it gives you an idea of how deep this team is. Dre Wills, who is your defensive player of the year, can also put the ball on the floor and drive, finish at the rim. I think it's much harder to prepare for a team that you have three or more guys averaging 11 points than you have one or two all-stars putting up 25. Cremo. That's, and a that's an offensive foul. Yeah. Well, this is from the scouting report. Vermont's defense comes through here. A terrific help side defense. And look at the slide over. Lamb. Well, that's a freshman playing help side getting the charge. We've seen so many of these calls this season, especially offensive fouls. You have to watch it as the offensive player. No more can you just go, you know, erratic to the basket and plow people over. They That's are right. calling a lot of offensive fouls this season. Head up, chest up. Got to make sure you're not putting your shoulder into defenders or extending that forearm. Five-point lead for the Catamounts. Darren Payne is also in right now, number 12. Here's a three, though, on the way and way off that time by Trey Bell Haynes. Quickly on the run, Campbell, and that is a foul, and it counts. It's a blocking foul, and a chance for the three-point play. Underneath, it was Anthony Lamb that tried to take the charge that time, but it's called for the ticket. Let's take a look at this. You see Lamb backtracking, keeping his eye on the ball. Terrific job. Ooh. That's a close call there, Mike. It was close. Tried to get in there. I don't know if he was 100% set. Maybe the fans, of course, here think otherwise. Is Devontae Campbell, who was also on the all-defensive team for Albany this season, cans a three-point play. Are the feet in place before the offensive player starts their upward motion? And that was as close as I think I've seen a charge call all season. Anthony Lamb again. Ball tracked down in the corner and saved by Cremo, but there's going to be a foul here on Vermont. And the Albany fans love it behind their bench and head coach Will Brown. This program went Division I in the 99-2000 season. He came in, now it's his 16th season at the helm, began the, his campaign as an interim head coach in 2001. And ever since then, Brooke has led the program to five conference titles, the five NCAA tournament appearances. When I spoke to him yesterday, you know, we both kind of talked to the fact that Albany is not phased coming here. They've won on the road. Really, there's no pressure on the Great Danes right now, if you think about it. All the pressure seems like it has to be on Vermont. Exactly. I mean, they've got the home court advantage, the 20-game win streak. Right now, it's time to produce everything you've done in the regular season. Are you going to cap it off here with a win? And Will Brown, great coach. Just received a five-year contract, so he'll be at Albany through the 2021 season. Nice move, nice cut back. How about it? David Nichols finishing, and we're tied at nine. Cam Ward now for Vermont. Kick ball here on Cremo. How about Albany getting it on the offensive end? What'd you see here? A good read off the give and go from David Nichols. It's a brush screen, didn't get any help side. Vermont did from Darren Payne on that exchange. And a good job and a good straight cut to the basket for David Nichols. Albany's on a 5 0 run here to tie this game at 9 13 20, first half. Oh, nice cut down the lane and the floater by Dre Wills. 
from Cam Ward on the assist. It's a great chemistry play there. And that's a feel. That's a feel for following your defender, turning around and knowing you've got your teammate trailing behind you for that soft toss of the jump shot. Anybody can beat you for Vermont. There's not right. really one player you should be putting all the defensive attention on because that's going to that's going to hurt you. Albany inside foul underneath on the block as Travis Charles worked his way in. This game is going to be so tight, but this is what I mean. This is the chemistry part of it, right? You just feel Dre Wills coming behind you, so you just give him the, the easy pass. Kim Ward lays it up. That's what Vermont does. They keep coming. They keep coming. Well, that's what they said. For them, they don't feel like they have any subs, just reinforcements. There's seven players on Vermont that's averaging over six points a ball game, and nine different players have actually led this team in scoring this season. Well, the two best players there, Trey Bell Haynes and Anthony Lamb on the bench early. They're getting some breathers. These guys aren't having to put much more than 20, 25 minutes in a night. Travis Charles has had a real nice campaign. Top score off the bench, and best shooting percentage from the field for this Albany team at 60%. And he puts the Great Danes within one. Wells again. On the kick, open is Duncan for three. Counted for Ernie Duncan. Brown telling his guys hey, we need to play a half-court game. We've got to slow Vermont down and force them into sets. And meanwhile, for them to not turn it over and get a shot on every possession is going to give them the best chance to win. And I like what David Nichols is doing. This is a guy that went from two points a game as a freshman to now 18 points a game. He is looking for the rim on every possession. That's a great point. Barely played during his freshman year. 15 games, like you said, averaging under three points a ball game. That's a huge step. Duncan. Again on the cut. And a foul here as Dre Wills does it once again. So you have to be ready for that. And the Catamounts will shoot free throws when we return. Two-point lead for Vermont here in Burlington. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. Everyone loves Taco Bell's iconic crunch wrap. And once again, we're taking that love to new heights. The one that got away is back in a big way. The bigger, beefier, triple double crunch wrap. Only at Taco Bell. This lovely lady has a typical airline credit card, so she only earns double miles on purchases she makes from that airline. Would you earn double miles on, please? Oh, it's unfortunate. There's a better option. The Capital One Venture Card. With Venture, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, everywhere, every day. Not just airline purchases. Seems like a no-brainer. What's in your wallet? Range Rover Sport. Land Rover. Above and beyond. It's back. And it's front. No, really. The Triple Double Crunch Wrap Big Box is back. And it's still all mains, no sides, with a Doritos Locos Taco, a Crunchy Taco, and a Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Just five bucks. Only a Taco Bell. Fourteen to twelve, Vermont on top. Here we're just under twelve minutes to play in this first half. Mike Corey, Brooke Weisbrod, let's go inside to play here. Brooke, what do we have? Well, watch Dre Wills here. He's going to be on the left side of your screen, and when he drives to the bucket, watch the defense for Albany. They're all going to collapse and come inside the paint. All five guys, and that allows 
Vermont to kick it out for the three, and this is what you're going to see all afternoon because you've got guys that can put the ball on the floor, guys who can shoot the three, fill in the lanes behind the drivers. That's what makes it difficult, right? If you're Albany, you can't just guard the ball handler. You have to see who's coming in behind him. How are you playing help side? Who are you talking with? Very difficult, as I said, to prepare for a team that has multiple scores than just two All-Stars. The numbers are outstanding. 50% from the field shooting for Vermont this season. That's good for fifth nationally, and that's to your point. And they're three of six right now from three-point range here to start this game as they lead by two. Yeah, not something I would have expected to start this game for Vermont. Certainly would have thought they looked to go inside, but Albany gave them that outside shot, and I think that's exactly what John Becker expected. I mean, he expected Trey Bell Haynes to be wide open from three all afternoon. Fortunately for him, the ball is going to the hands of some of the other guys and the better three-point shooters. Cremo comes in for Devontae Campbell for Albany. Dre Wells, the America East Defensive Player of the Year, senior out of Indianapolis. Pressure trying to trap it's a little What's soft defense here, right? To slow down the offense from Albany, make them start their offense into the 20 and 19 second part of the shot clock. What's your assessment early here on the Albany off offense and their half court set? So it's a nice drive here by Dallas Enema for two. What do you think? Yeah, I think they're doing a good job. They're staying patient. They're looking for, hey, who's open? What's the best play going to be? And Vermont is a team that's not going to get rattled, but Albany on offense, they got to keep driving, get to the rim, get inside the paint. And that's going to free up the outside. You know, one thing I thought Will Brown spoke about yesterday that made a lot of sense was saying, hey, we need Joe Primo and David Nichols to get our other guys involved in the offense. Lamb got shut down. Wills again. Ball was tied up. It's a jump. And it's going to stay with Vermont on the possession arrow. Good hustle from Dallas Cinema to get his hands on the ball and the driver. Look at Dre Wills picking his dribble up. A little bit of contact there, but can go for the jump ball anyways. Yeah, they're going to have the ball first, but you're right. Good call now with four seconds on the shot clock. Vermont gets it into Duncan. He recognizes it. That's a tough contested shot, and it's a violation. Good job there in the D by Enema. So got the tie up, and then contesting that three in the corner. Not sure that's the right place to inbound the ball. Right. The shot clock running down. You've basically got two extra defenders there in the corner. And with the depth of the Catamounts, too, to be able to run in so many different players, you can play this kind of game and try to give some pressure throughout. Challenge Albany, take some time off their shot clock. You do hockey substitutions. Right. You've got plenty of options here. Nichols firing for three. Oh, what a shot by David Nichols. That's a Chicago kid right there. You see it on his arm, representing the city all the way up here in Vermont. And Albany takes a two-point lead, 17-15. First lead of the morning here in Vermont for the early start as we get champ week started on this Saturday. Trey Bell Haynes. Again, Wells, and getting the inside position was Henson. See, they never panic. It's who's cutting, how can I find an angle? And I was so impressed watching them practice yesterday to see the tight spaces they were able to drive these passes through, especially Trey Bell Haynes. Models his game after Tony Duncan. There you go. Here's Nichols again off the screen, and He's getting free. Doesn't need a lot of time, Brooke, on these shots. That one's just a little bit off the mark. And I'd like to see Albany work through the offense a little more because you can already feel the onus is on Joe Primo and David Nichols. Primo hasn't had a, a hot start so far. We expect him to warm up here soon. Oh, nice move. Lamb makes the extra pass, and Henson thought about the three instead going in and a blocking foul. And it's going to be on Primo. That'll be his second for Albany. Will Brown thinks otherwise. Oh, 
Well, the SEC men's tournament continues later today with the semifinals on ESPN. First at 1 o'clock Eastern, Kentucky, the one seed, battling Alabama. Then at 3 Eastern, Arkansas and Vandy. The championship game is tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Wow, Vandy, another win yes. over Florida. And I'll tell you what, that Alabama-Kentucky game, watch out now. Avery Johnson knows how to pump his guys up. You like Alabama there? Why not? All right. Right? Why not? Kentucky's already Kentucky's, in. And they're beatable. And, you know, we've seen, yes. well, everybody's beatable this year, right? What a season. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see who gets in and one more day to go. Well, there's, there's not a lot of all-stars in, in this year's college crop. You've got good teams, but not the Ben Simmons and, and the standout stars. But it'll be great to see how Kentucky responds to that Alabama defense. Vermont back on top by two. Nichols checked by Wills. Nichols with a backdoor cut. Ooh. Excellent D and a block by Wills. Steidel first came over with a help. And then Wills comes back and says, get it out of there. You know what they call this? This is Dre Day right here, the help <laughs> side. Send that out of here with a smile, Dre. Ooh, that's humiliating. But team basketball, though, how about Steidel, who comes over with a help D and then allows Wills that time to get back and make that play? No question. Now, how will Nichols respond? He's a tough guy. I know he wants that ball back and another chance to score. Two blocks in a row. Shot clock violation. He thought he got fouled, and you're looking at the defensive player of the year, the American East, and he's showing you why. 24 for Vermont. You ever block anybody's shot like that? No. <laughs> First, you got to be able to jump. That's right. <laughs> Henson. Clears way now for Wills. What does he do on the offensive end? He's had some nice cuts to the basket. Instead, feeds it for Trey Bell. Haynes. Land for the offensive rebound. And that's out of bounds to Albany. Feel this game really tightening up. These players, they know what's on the line. Super heated environment, but it's important for these guys to keep their emotions in check. Don't talk to the referees too much. Don't start playing that game. Yeah, Lamb talking to Ron Tiberski over there. He says, no. And here's a timeout. Well, a timeout is taken by Albany. The four Vermont got in there for a jump ball, and they're not thrilled with it, but Campbell did go right to the ref with possession for a timeout. 1917 in the America East Championship game. You know how hard it is to score against Vermont? These two plays will tell you right here. Dre Wills, the Defensive Player of the Year, comes through with two blocks in one possession. These people are real BK Chicken Sandwich haters. The meat is very juicy, very tasty. I don't remember a Burger King chicken sandwich tasting as is good. Because it's the new crispy chicken sandwich made with 100% white meat seasoned chicken filet, only at Burger King. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra responsive Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. These people are real BK Chicken Sandwich haters. The meat is very juicy, very tasty. I don't remember a Burger King chicken sandwich tasting as, as good. Because it's the new crispy chicken sandwich, made with 100% white meat seasoned chicken filet, only at Burger King. Last time these two teams went up in the America East Championship game, 2013, right here at Patrick Gymnasium. Jacob Yachty, two huge three-pointers in the closing minutes were the only two shots he took the whole game in Albany with the win at Vermont, 53 to 49 back in 2013. And the Great Danes are not phased. They're five and zero in America East title games. 3-0 versus Vermont, and two of them are right here in this building, Brooke. They're experienced, and they know they belong here. This has been a season where they've had to fight to get to this point, and Vermont, it seems like a foregone conclusion that they are going to win this tournament. 
But Albany, as you said, they're not afraid to be here. They know they deserve it, and they're ready to relish in the moment. Both teams have won five America East Conference titles. This will be the 11th time in the last 15 years that it'll either be Vermont or Albany in the NCAA tournament. Rebound Anthony Lamb. Trey Bell Haynes, count to basket, and he's fouled. This sure looks like something Tony Parker would do. Watch Trey Bell Haynes take it full court and navigate through the defense. Look, eyes up, he knows where he's going. Could have kicked it out wide to Dre Wells. Instead, finishes the play himself. Player of the year in the America East, Trey Bell Haynes Jr. out of Ontario. Thousand point scorer for this group, and we said it at the start. It's not about the numbers per se. Guy averages 11 points, two and a half boards a game. I mean, he does lead this team in assists and steals, and like everybody, seems to do all the little things that have resulted in this undefeated conference season for Vermont and a 20 game win streak. He's the point guard. He's got to make sure everybody is in position, but it's the chemistry and the communication on this team it really helps him lead that offense. And as a point guard, you got to know your guys, they're going to buy into what you're selling, what the coach is selling. And there's no issues on this team. No drama, as John Becker likes to say. David Nichols, ball in his hands. He committed the foul on the defensive end. Ten to shoot. Vermont's on a 7 nothing run here. Shot clock down to five. Nichols. Tough play there. Blocked by Henson and company. Here's a three, Steidel, and rebounded by Albany. Good shot in the sky for that one, Travis Charles. This has to be a possession where David Nichols gets his teammates involved in the offense, because this is now four times. Nichols has tried to take it to the bucket and has gotten it blocked. Can't do it. How about another block by Henson? Five to one in blocks right now in favor of the Catamounts. And John Becker, his first season, they won the America East Conference Championship. And all they've done is just continue the success. As you see, Wills takes a seat. And the success from when this program really got it going back in the early 2000s. And you know, he's been here for a while, was a five-year assistant under head coach Mike Lonergan. Then he's taken over and now has a chance to bring his team back to the NCAA tournament for the second time under his leadership. It's like what he had to say yesterday you know, about the way he's coached this team. And and they've bought in themselves. It's not a lot of correcting or attitude problems that he has to deal with. You know, he comes in, he talks X's and O's, breaking down the defense, and what do we need to do to win? Not, hey, what guys need more minutes? A lot of times coaches have to deal with that. And what a relief. I know coaches across the country are saying, all right, John Becker, what's your secret up right. here? Off the screen, Dallas Enema launching, no good, rebound Lamb. Albany has now missed their last seven shot attempts from the field. Steidel. Rebound again by Charles. Pretty good Albany contingent behind their bench to the far side. And the purple for the Great Danes. They've traveled well here today to see if they can move on to the NCAA tournament. Charles, yes, nice shot. A huge sigh of relief for the bench from Albany. Their inside scoring finally showing up. Travis Charles has got to be one of those guys to call for the ball when he knows he's in great position. It has to be the job of David Nichols and Joe Primo to find the big guys and make sure they get a touch. Now count them out to the shot clock winding down. Lamb for three. And you can see Albany deliberate here and taking their time trying to find their best opportunity offensively as well. They don't want to get into like a track meet here. Right, and with Nichols and, and Cremo on the bench, now it's the job of Anderson to run the offense. And a different look now. Now you got the weave. And two good takes, two good offensive possessions. Campbell with the finish there. Devontae Campbell, the sophomore from Ontario, and now Albany within one as we are just under five minutes to play first half. Trey Bell Haynes directing traffic. 
That's a good isolation for Lamb. Lamb one on one with Mike Rowley, and Rowley got him, but he got tipped back out to Trey Bell Haynes. Payne and Ward set the check into the next whistle for the Catamounts. Oh, what a move. It's kind of froze the defender that time, Brock, and drives in for the easy two. Well, we saw the last time they ran that play. It was a pick and pop for Lamb for a three. The defense bid on it. Instead, they left a wide open lane for Trey Bell Haynes to take full advantage. And it doesn't take him but a half second to read it and react. Costa Anderson, there's going to be a foul, though. It's a moving screen. How many of those have we seen this season? You've got to be fully set, and Travis Charles was not. Here's His that. first foul, and it takes us to a timeout. Sorry, Mike, here's that play we're talking about. The high roll, the high screen, and the defense doesn't react. This is all day long for Trey Bell Haynes. He'll take that and then some. Hand cut tomatoes, fresh original dough. You'd expect those from a pizza family. But here's something you didn't see coming. Get a two topping pan or large pizza from Papa John's, just $9.99. That's right, only $9.99. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Welcome to Stouffer's Fit Kitchen. Prime cuts of meat, 25 grams of protein, and savory mouth-watering sides. It's the perfect balance of delicious and nutritious, making it just the right fit for you. Stouffer's Fit Kitchen meals. This is fit. Hello? I just didn't recognize you. Sweet new ride. Thanks. Would you get a promotion? Wait, are you our boss now? You're the boss. I'm gonna need more vacation days. Oh, can I call in sick today? Guys, I don't have that kind of power. But I can park this car with my mind. Now you're just showing off. Lease the first ever all-wheel drive Infiniti QX30 crossover at your local Infiniti retailer. It seems like every financial company talks about investing your way to wealth. But what about protecting what you're building right now? At Northwestern Mutual, we know the importance of doing both. We combine personalized investment solutions that help grow your wealth with world-class insurance that protects what matters most to you. This whole picture approach is just one of the reasons 96% of our clients stay with us year after year. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. NBA Sunday Showcase, Bulls, Celtics, tomorrow on ABC. Desperate times call for desperate measures. The bat signal was sent. We deployed tanks and Blackhawks to the bracket bunker. Joe Lenardi will join me on the Audi Halftime Report moments away as we lean on his knowledge, wisdom, perspective. Joe Lenardi in studio. But until then, let's go back to Burlington. All right, sounds good. So here we go with just 3.50 to play in this first half. Vermont leading 24 to 21. And with possession and Cam Ward, Mike Corey, Brooke Weisbrod, and so far back and forth here in this first frame. What have you seen now from the Catamounts? What are you looking for for them offensively? Well, they've been trying to get inside and go to Anthony Lamb and, and keep the ball in his hands. But as we know, Vermont has many weapons. They're just going to keep working through their offense, trying to score in the paint. That's what they do best. There is Lamb again. Offensive rebound, Darren Payne. Sixth man of the year award winner in the American East Conference this season. Kick ball with 16 on the shot clock. Are you surprised that it's in the 20s here in this ball game right now? Low score, or is this what you expected between these two? You think? It's a little lower than I expected, but talking with John Becker and Will Brown yesterday, both coaches saying eh, 60, 65, okay. the first two, it probably wins the game. Lamb. No call made as they tried to take the charge there. Steyer, maybe a little bit of an acting job, but then they did get a foul as Lamb went in. Let's take a look at that again. Steyer gets low. I like the positioning there. And look at him and Lamb just battling. I don't know about that. Wasn't acting. That could have been a legit charge. Well, they didn't Lamb call it. Yeah. it. Yeah, he lowered his shoulder. The call goes the 
Catamount's way for Vermont. That was a little surprising to me. Said it was Mike Rowley that was called for the foul, his second. Anthony Lamb has seven America East Rookie of the Week awards this season, which is the most ever by a UVM rookie. You know, and a guy that they got out of Rochester, New York, one of the four finalists for the New York State Mr. Basketball as a senior. And we talked to John Becker about this, is that there has not been a Division I men's basketball player out of the state of Vermont in eight years. So it's not like they lose anybody to any other school. They've got to go out and find these players, and they get Lamb, which is a huge find for them out of New York. Yeah, incredible get, and, and someone who's just got a, a bright future here. Loved talking with him yesterday. I said, is this the kind of season you expected for yourself? And pretty much, yeah. <laughs> he knew he had the hard work to get here. Nice feed by Nichols inside. And a foul as Charles heads to the stripe. Payne with his first foul for Vermont. Travis Charles missed most of last year, had a heart condition. A season was cut short after nine games played, and now he's really their sixth man, if you will, coming off the bench, their top scorer and best shooter from the field and connects on the free throws here. He's done a really good job while Cremo and David Nichols both out. And Cremo without even a field goal attempt this afternoon. Yeah, that's surprising. Second leading scorer for Albany, number three for the Great Danes. They're going to need his services if they want to pull off this upset win. Vermont's won 20 games in a row. Wills up to Henson. Nice strong drive to the feed to Wills from Ernie Duncan. And that's Vermont at their finest. Albany defense on the weak side. You gotta pay attention when those cutters are coming through. Get in front of your man. So those passes aren't as open. It's relentless, really. They come from all over. They come from the baseline side. They come from the wing. They come right down the lane at the top. Ten second violation. Devontae Campbell didn't get it over in time. And their defense is stifling, but on offense, look at how well spaced they are. Off the screen and roll. They're going to drive. Stay patient. Don't lose their dribble. And again. That weak side defense, you've got to pay attention, be in help side, and know where your man is at all times. Three turnovers for the Great Danes, just one for the Catamounts here in this first half. Steidel on a kick, and a three by Henson. No, and a foul on the rebound. It's going against Darren Payne. 16 fouls now the Catamounts as we are under two minutes to play first half. 16 fouls. Now David Nichols checked back into the game for Albany. He's got to get the ball inside. I think that's the right way to go for Albany. You don't want to rely totally on Nichols to score. Plus, he's got Dre Wills on him. Best defender in America East. A little push off there. Crowd side. Not enough for the foul, though, as Nichols Gets it for Charles, who gets the inside position and the step for two. How about Charles calling for the ball? Aggressive saying, give it to me. I know I can score inside. That's the confidence you got to have for the big man. Charles, seven points behind his teammate Nichols. Right now for the Great Danes, who are within two. Wills uses his body and couldn't finish with the easy runner in front of the hoop, and Albany's got a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. Steyer. Got to get rid of it. Nichols hits. Steyer picked up his dribble. He thought he was in trouble, but Nichols was actually able to use him as a screen. Well, bump Dre Wills. Dre's trying to have a conversation with the official, but not going to get that call. Timeout, Vermont. We will be back. 37.6 remaining first half in a tie game. You got a truck for a reason. 
So get some Firestone tires and go do truck stuff. The Firestone Destination AT. Long link, carbon reinforced to conquer any terrain and any truck stuff. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. And here's truck stuff like you've never seen. Destination AT Special Edition in carbon black camo. We got a tie ball game and Albany's done a terrific job of looking inside. Watch Travis Charles number 30 on the right side of your screen saying, give me the ball, son. I'm going to finish at the rim. The inside scoring has got to be there for Albany. And then a terrific job by David Nichols to read the defense, comes off the body, breaks dire. It's a short jump shot. That's what you expect here in the championship game between these two. They've been great over the last decade in the America East. Vermont and Albany each with five NCAA appearances to their credit. Who is going to the big dance this year? We'll find out. We've got 37.6 seconds to play first half. Mike Corey alongside former Big South Player of the Year and Coastal Carolina Hall of Famer Brooke Weisbrod from Patrick Gymnasium in Burlington, Vermont. Dre Wills, Catamounts, that's going to be a traveling violation. And now Albany here, Brooke, has a chance for the final possession of this first half. I think David Nichols is going to take that last shot, but I think they should work it in. Try to get the best shot they can. Do anything to avoid a turnover here. Don't give Vermont a pick six heading into the half. Devontae Campbell. And that's going to be another moving screen after he handed it off to Nichols, who says, what happened here? And Will Brown thinking the same thing. It's as soon as you hand that ball off, if you want to set a screen, you've got to be completely set. Here it is. Well, this is exactly what Dre Wills was talking to the officials about. Uh, I, I, I don't see, see that at all. There, yes. No way. Mm -mm. I'm giving you the rule of what it states, but there was <laughs> nothing close to the rule there on that play. That that's a bad call. And a turnover. So it gives Vermont a chance to take the lead heading into the locker room. And Nichols picks up his second. Ten seconds to play. Catamounts. Lamb. On the spin. Still time. And I don't know if that's going to count. The officials say no. And Trey Bell Haynes, so they're going to go over to the monitor to take a look and verify it, but I don't think he got it off in time. All right, Mike, well, tie ball game going into halftime, and Anthony Lamb, terrific footwork, gets the look he wants. And Trey Bell Haynes yep. hoping to have enough time to kick it out to Ernie Duncan for that three, and it all runs out. Nichols with 11 points, Henson with eight for Vermont as the top scorer. We've reached the break, tied at 27 at the half in the America East Championship game. Now let's get to the studio. Doug Kazarian and Joe Lenardi. Guys, let's tell you. Mike Brooke, thank you very much. This is the Audi Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on action from late last night out in Las Vegas. Pac-12 and Lonzo Ball, Player of the Year candidate. This was a, uh, could have been a significant injury here. Lonzo Ball's thumb jammed, Joe. They can't play at a high level without him, that's for sure. UCLA, 4 of 25 from downtown. Maybe that injury affected ball shooting. Second half, Lowry Market in Arizona, 10 of 20 from downtown, and seven-footer can also jam. Arizona going to play for the title tonight against Oregon. The winner of that game, Doug, will be the number two seed in the West, I believe. Strange scene here with less than a second to go. Sean Miller calls timeout. Steve Alford wondering what's up in the handshake. Alford did something similar earlier this year when the UCLA beat, it, beat Arizona. Let's go to Barclays, Duke, and Carolina for the third time. Justin, and the comeback is on. It was a 13-point lead for North Carolina in the second half, but the Blue Devils coming back. The alley-oop to Harry Giles, the number one recruit a year ago. The freshman delivers, and ooh, Theo Pinson with the cram. And Carolina looked like this would be a blowout, and Duke comes all the way back and wins. Duke could be the first ACC team ever to win four games in four days at the ACC tournament. 
That would be the best run in conference history. This is the Audi Halftime Report. I am Doug Kazarian and Joe Lenardi in the flesh. It's like sitting next to Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. There's am, lights in here. I am honored. Yeah, he's out of the bracket bunker. So let's talk about those two games. You had Carolina, a chance to get the number one overall seed. What happens now that they lost? I still think Carolina, Doug, will be a number one seed, most likely in the South region. I don't see how a regular season outright champion of a league like the ACC doesn't get a number one seed. In fact, I believe the four number one seeds are locked and in that order. Although you could make a case for Kansas and Carolina to flip. The others aren't going anywhere. Villanova number one overall, win or lose. What about Duke? I know you just touched on it a moment ago, but we've seen over the years injuries. Committee takes that into account. What about Coach K missing seven games? Blue Devils went four and three in that stretch. Yeah, it certainly helped Syracuse a year ago. Uh, Jim Beheim's suspension was taken into account. Uh, they snuck in to the uh, field at the last minute and, of course, went to the Final Four. Duke, in this case, I don't think it's Coach K coming back and the team being reevaluated. I think it's winning four big-time games in a row, potentially in Brooklyn, to get all the way up to a number two. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday. A five seed has never won the ACC tournament, but obviously this Duke team, not your everyday five seed. All right, that's the top tier of teams. How about the bubble teams? Selection Sunday, a day away. 13 seeds up for grabs today. Joey Brackets in the house to break this down all This halftime report is presented by Audi. Earning your cash back shouldn't be this complicated. Yet some cars limit where you earn bonus cash back to a few places and then change those places every few months. Enough with that. With Quicksilver from Capital One, you always earned unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, everywhere. Welcome to Unlimited. What's in your wallet? I have a way better deal here, uh, 10 nuggets for $1.49. I think two full Whopper meals for $10 is clearly the better deal. He wears glasses and he can't see which is the better deal. You want these glasses? No, I don't. Get two Whopper meals for 10 bucks or 10 nuggets for $1.49, only at Burger King. I joined the Army in July of 98. I did active duty 11 years and two in the reserve. Our 18-year-old was in an accident. When I call USA, it was that voice asking me, is your daughter okay? That's where I felt relief. It actually helped to know that somebody else cared and wanted to make sure that I was okay. That was really great. We're the Rivera family, and we will be with USAA for life. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Call today to talk about your insurance needs. These people are real BK chicken sandwich haters. The meat is very juicy, very tasty. I don't remember a Burger King chicken sandwich tasting this. It's good. Because it's the new crispy chicken sandwich made with 100% white meat seasoned chicken filet. Only at Burger King. Let the party begin. Champ Week's biggest night begins tonight at 6 on ESPN. Watching the Audi Halftime Report. Six. Welcome back. Here we are. The latest regarding the bubble from Joe Lenardi. Key to look at this is the last four in. All four teams on the left side of the screen are done. They've been eliminated in their conference tournament. Rhode Island will play Davidson today at 1 Eastern in the 8-10 semifinals. Joe, break down the chances of all these teams. Well, let's start with Syracuse. It's a rite of spring for me to be wrong about the Orange. <laughs> and their fans, you know, we have a love-hate relationship. Sure. They love to hate me. But I think Syracuse, in this case, with six top 50 wins, that, to me, carries more weight than what would be the worst RPI ever to get in at large. All right, let's keep it in the ACC Wake Forest. Wake did the work it had to do in the final week of the regular season, beating Louisville, finally getting that big-time W, and then backing it up by going on the road and winning at Virginia Tech. They lost to Tech in the next game in the ACC tournament, but avoided the bad loss against PC. All right, K-State big win, but then a tough loss last night. And this is going to be a tough call because K-State was under 500 in the Big 12, but then got that enormous win over Baylor, their second against the Bears in the Big 12 quarterfinals. They only lost by a point to West Virginia. I, I like their chances. And then here's USC, only nine losses. Yeah, I know, but not a great schedule. And really, 
Two wins, SMU and, of course, UCLA at home. Nice, but not a good record against the top 50. I'm just not a big fan of the Pac-12 beyond the top three. All right, so outside looking in, first two out, you or I? I think this is the story of the day here, the Rams. They've got a clear path to the A-10 final because the top seed, Dayton, has lost in their half of the bracket. So I don't think Rhode Island should be thinking about an at-large. They should just win the A-10 tournament and take it out of the question. And they face the 9 seed Davidson, which beat Dayton. How about Illinois State? Their season's done right now, too. I've been saying all day, five or 10 years ago, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Illinois State, on the strength of an overwhelming regular season and a good RPI, would be in. But that's not the way the committee rolls anymore. So it's interesting. So if, if Rhode Island wins today and doesn't win the championship game in the A-10, are they in over US, USC as the last team? Only if the bubble doesn't shrink with somebody stealing it elsewhere. Another bid stealer. All right, so plenty to play for for URI. Other team just sitting and waiting and rooting for chalk. Speaking of chalk, David Nichols with the bucket. However, Albany and Vermont tied. Explore a place where you can fly on the back of a banshee. Walk under floating mountains and navigate a mystical river. Welcome to our world beyond belief. Pandora, the world of Avatar. Only at the Walt Disney World Resort. Everyone loves Taco Bell's iconic crunch wrap. And once again, we're taking that love to new heights. The one that got away is back in a big way. The bigger, beefier, triple double crunch wrap. Only at Taco Bell. I use what's already inside me to reach my goals. So I like when my doctor told me I may reach my blood sugar and A1C goals by activating what's within me. with once weekly Trulicity. Trulicity is not insulin. It helps activate my body to do what it's supposed to do, release its own insulin. Trulicity responds when my blood sugar rises. I take it once a week and it works 24 seven. It comes in an easy to use pen and I may even lose a little weight. Trulicity is a once weekly injectable prescription medicine to improve blood sugar in adults with type two diabetes when used with diet and exercise. Trulicity is not insulin. It should not be the first medicine to treat diabetes or for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not take Trulicity if you or a family member has had medullary thyroid cancer, if you've had multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, or if you are allergic to Trulicity. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms such as itching, rash, or trouble breathing, a lump or swelling in your neck, or severe pain in your stomach area. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis, which can be fatal. Taking Trulicity with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases your risk for low blood sugar. Common side effects include nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, decreased appetite, and indigestion. Some side effects can lead to dehydration, which may make existing kidney problems worse. With Trulicity, I click to activate what's within me. If you want help improving your A1C and blood sugar numbers with a non-insulin option, click to activate your within. Ask your doctor about once weekly Trulicity. This halftime report is presented by Audi. Don't forget, once the brackets are released tomorrow evening, you can go log on to ESPN.com slash bracket and compete with all of us in the tournament challenge. Moments away over on ESPN, or about an hour from now, I should say, after college game day, Coach Cal in Kentucky facing Alabama SEC semis. Meanwhile, second half coming up, Vermont undefeated in conference play during the regular season. we got a tie game. This has been the Audi Halftime Report. I joined the Army in July of 98. I did active duty 11 years and two in the reserve. Our 18-year-old was in an accident. When I call USA, it was that voice asking me, is your daughter okay? That's where I felt relief. It actually helped to know that somebody else cared and wanted to make sure that I was okay. That was really great. We're the Rivera family, and we will be with USAA for life. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Call today to talk about your insurance needs. 
I have a way better deal here, uh, 10 nuggets for $1.49. I think two full Whopper meals for $10 is clearly the better deal. He wears glasses and he can't see which is the better deal. You want these glasses? No, I don't. Get two Whopper meals for 10 bucks or 10 nuggets for $1.49. Only at Burger King. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra-responsive Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. I thought you were family. You decide who. Asset secure. You decide where. You decide when. Now we're having fun! Only you decide how your story begins and how the cartels ends. Ghost Recon Wildlands. Available now. Rated M for Mature. These people are real BK chicken sandwich haters. The meat is very juicy, very tasty. Ooh. I don't remember a Burger King chicken sandwich tasting this. It's good. Because it's the new crispy chicken sandwich. Made with 100% white meat seasoned chicken filet. Only at Burger King. Welcome back to Champ Week on ESPN here in Burlington, Vermont for the America East Championship game winner to the NCAA tournament. Tied at 27 as we get set for the second half. Hi again, everyone. Mike Corey and Brooke Weisbrod. Not a bad first half here so far between these two. Vermont has led by as many as six. Albany by two. They're getting a lot of performances uh, here today by, but by two guys for Albany. Nichols leading the way along with Charles. Yeah, Nichols right now. 14 shot attempts in that first half. No other player from Albany has taken more than three three field goal attempts and that includes Joe Primo who has yet to attempt a shot even in this game but the toughness of David Nichols going up against that Vermont defense able to score inside hit a long distance shot but he's got to get his teammates involved and here was Travis Charles he was two of two in the first half did a great job calling for the basketball and Vermont the big time defensive plays have come a plenty in the first half five blocks for this team most of them against David Nichols 14 field goal attempts so for Vermont this is what you're going to expect more of the same here in the second half and what an atmosphere here today as well sold out in Patrick gymnasium 32 66 the capacity here of this place and they love the Canamats but Albany has traveled well too they've got their fans in the house and Looking to try to pull off this upset against the Vermont team that has won 20 in a row. It's the nation's best winning streak, and our second half is underway. Besides UConn's best winning streak, That's of right. course. Yes. Let's put it in perspective. Side, anyway. Yes. <laughs> Albany on the offense to begin the second half, and they take the lead with Greg Steyer. It's smart. Go inside right away. Now beef up your defense. And make sure you put Vermont in, in a place where they have to play the half court and work for every shot they get. Steyer's got four points on two for two from the field. Trey Bell Haynes and the defense collapses and Steyer gets a block. Yeah, he's probably tired of seeing all the block packages that we've thrown from Vermont here today and he comes up That's with right. one of his own. Yeah, they want a little love, but I love the communication and the help side on defense. David Nichols got pitched off and then here comes Steyer with a terrific help side and it ends up in a block. Primo. You think they want to try to get him more involved. He's their second leading scorer, averaging 16 points a ball game and in that first half, he didn't take any shots. He's a player who can create his own shot, and he's not going to force himself into the offense. Lamb inside and blocked again. This time it was Rowley that got in there for the Great Danes. Well, that was a pass, not put in the right place. Duncan didn't lay it up easily for Lamb. And that's a frustration foul there on Anthony Lamb, and that is his second. Let's go back and watch that Albany defense. Steyer on Ernie Duncan off the drive here. You see there was supposed to be a switch, but you know, thankfully Greg Steyer comes through with some big-time help defense and gets another block there. 
Rookie of the year in the America East, Anthony Lamb. And you, know, you and I were talking during the half. He was one for seven coming into the second half. Now one for eight. He's picked up his second personal foul here. Is the Catamounts Henson tracking it down up for Trey Bell Haynes. And not there again. He wanted a foul, no call, and clearing it out of Steyer. Like this incredible defense for Albany to start this second half. Three possessions, three blocks for Greg Steyer. Yeah, Albany really kind of controlling the tempo and the pace of this game right now in Vermont. Just a little bit out of sorts. They haven't been able to get the shots they've wanted, and their defense now for Albany's really stepped it up. Controlling the pace, controlling the boards, and great job by David Nichols to not foul and allow Steyer to come over for help side. And keep in mind, this Vermont team shoots 50% as a team. Good move again inside of Ante Campbell. Today, Vermont. 32%, so the defense getting stronger by the possession for Albany. Largest lead for the Great Danes here in this America East Championship. Henson. And that's a blocking foul. And Steyer picks up two in a row. Transfer out of Tulane, Peyton Henson, and this unselfish group for the Catamounts. And we talked about it earlier about he's the guy that likes to keep everything neat in order with that group of teammates that all live in the same house. You talked about earlier, 10 guys and the camaraderie of this group. And it's no wonder that they're on this streak and how much they love playing with each other. You can't deny it. I mean, there's something to be said for almost the entire team living together and being able to work out any issues that might have happened in practice or in a game, they can get through those at home. But the craziest thing is that they said video games all the time. That's what Trey Bell Haynes. I said, okay, what are you playing? Anything but basketball. Call of Duty, FIFA, whatever, but no NBA 2K. Nope. Madden, of course. We've got video game leagues, fantasy football and basketball commissioners. A lot of fun that they have here. Three minutes gone by, second half. Albany, though, really asserting themselves to begin this second half. Mike Rowley and the senior from Australia puts the Great Danes back up four. And usually a defensive guy. There's some quick hands. It's going to be a kick ball. And this is what Will Brown was talking about. At the lunch, lunch pail guys getting involved in the offense. Here's Mike Rowley. Taking it off the dribble right to the Vermont defense. I like what Albany's doing. They're not settling for outside shots, not settling for threes. They're trying to take it right to the best defense in the conference. Lamb is fouled on the baseline. And Steyer gets called for the ticket once again. The American Conference semifinals continue later today here on ESPN2. SMU and UCF, and then Cincinnati and UConn. They'll meet at 5 o'clock Eastern. The championship game in the American is tomorrow at 3.15 Eastern on ESPN. Oh, well, Andy Katz told me that, you know, UConn's too injured to win sure. the American Athletic Conference. So what say you now, Andy <laughs> Katz? One step closer. They're right there. What a foul on a great Dean Steyer. Now three on him. And Coach Will Brown's got a sub up off the bench. Travis Charles, outstanding first half that he had. Seven points, two rebounds, and, and he comes off the bench, and now obviously a good time to get him back in. So what you lose in defense, you gain in offense with Travis Charles. Remember in the first half, he and Nichols worked very well together. Eye contact off the dribble. Charles was big, getting that position, wide stance, saying, give me the ball. Quick shot there by Steidel. And Vermont down by four here. Three and a half minutes gone by second half. Good up and under by Nichols, and he couldn't quite finish. A fight for the rebound, and Rowley's underneath. Got it back up to Nichols, and a wide open three now by Cremo. Count it. The extra half second he took to make sure his feet were set to the follow through with a quick answer from Ernie Duncan. 
Vermont needed that in a bad way right there. And they were 0 for 4 from the field in this second half until that shot. And it's back to a four point deficit. They got to get the crowd back into it here as well, too, Brooke. Well, they brought their own support staff. A lot of fans and their loud ones, not quite as full as the Vermont fans, but still, Albany's been in this position before. They know how to win championships. Lamb on the take, and oh. again, unable to finish. And he's had some really good and easy looks at the basket at times this game, and he hasn't been able to get him to go down. Got to concentrate. He's getting so close to the rim, and it, he's laying it up short. You got to finish strong, Maybe even with a dunk. Since that first three-point shot, Lamb seemed out of sorts. Now Charles on the block. And he's been special today inside for Albany. Now nine points for Travis Charles. With the double flex, running back down the court. Get more confident here. Great backdoor cut. Great backdoor read by Peyton Henson. Ernie Duncan on the assist. 12 points now for Henson. Primo. Foul on Vermont. Away from the ball, and we've got a timeout with the Great Danes up four. And Joe Primo, American East All Conference second team. First shot up, first shot in. The bench loves it too. The extra time Primo takes to knock that three down pays off. These people are real BK chicken sandwich haters. The meat is very juicy, very tasty. I don't remember Burger King chicken sandwich tasting as, as good. Because it's the new crispy chicken sandwich made with 100% white meat seasoned chicken filet, only at Burger King. The Range Rover Sport. Land Rover. Above and beyond. If you believe life starts where the blacktop ends, if the power of an engine makes your heart race, don't settle for anything less than Polaris Razor, the ultimate off-road vehicle. With unequaled power, unrivaled suspension, and unmatched agility, all perfectly combined to help you chase down what matters most. Polaris Razor, we fuel your freedom. And now's the time to get up to $2,000 cash back during the Polaris Spring sales event. Can I give it to you straight? That airline credit card you have, it could be better. It's time to shake things up. With the Capital One Venture Card, you get double miles on everything you buy, not just airline purchases. Seriously, think of all the things you buy. Great. Is this why you asked me to coffee? Well, yeah. But also to catch up. <laughs> What's in your wallet? These people are real BK chicken sandwich haters. The chicken has a, has a crunch that's really nice, but it's soft on the inside. <laughs> Burger King. Wow. Right. Yep, it's Burger King with a new crispy chicken sandwich made with 100% white meat seasoned chicken filet. Only at Burger King. Championship week continues. Three champions will be crowned tonight on ESPN. The Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship game. Iowa State and West Virginia. The New York Life ACC Championship. How about Duke and Notre Dame? And then finally at 11 p.m. Eastern, the Pac-12 Championship presented by New York Life and Arizona and Oregon. One versus two. This is a lot of fun here today, isn't it? Dylan Brooks, Lowry Marketing. More of that, please. And after this game, 
you got the MEAC Player of the Year in Patrick Cole, who put up 26 against Ohio State. Watch out for that young man. And we saw all those teams and then those promos are all going to the tournament, but you know, it's one and done in games like this and the MEAC as well. Just so much excitement. And again, here today in Vermont as Drew Dre Wills goes down, he's going to need a little help as the Canamats get within two. Well, good to see him up walking it off. You know, for Vermont, a 20 game win streak isn't going to mean a whole lot unless they get out of here with a win. Certainly headed to postseason play in the NIT no matter what, but you see him starting to grab the back of his legs, so you wonder if he just planted wrong or if cramps might start to take effect in a game like this. Basket by Lamb, finally he's got to be thinking, okay, I got one in the interior to go down there on the follow for two. Coming up on 14 minutes left, two point game for the right to move on to the NCAA tournament. Each team's been to the NCAA five times with wins here in the America East Championship game. Nichols. Wells tracks it down and Nichols fouls him. Yeah, Mike, I didn't like that possession for Albany. Their, their offense trying to run a weave and coming off a brush screen at the top. But no one turned a hard corner. No one turned and looked to the basket. Instead, they settled for a jump shot. Vermont hasn't lost since December 21st at number 13 Butler. They lost that game by 12 at the time, number 13 Butler. All five of their losses are in non-conference, including to number 20 South Carolina at the time. And they've got the nation's longest win streak on the men's side at 20. Steidel. And a rebound by Rowley. This is what these two teams are playing for, the fourth NCAA tournament in the last five years. If Albany gets the win here today, Vermont trying to go back for the first time since 2012 when John Becker was in his first season as head coach. Nichols blocked by Trey Bell Haynes. And with three on the shot clock, Albany still has possession here. Nichols came away limping. seconds you've got enough time to get an inbound pass and a dribble toward the basket it's Nichols though on a fadeaway and rebounded by Henson I grab that's that twice today pass. we've seen that in the corner bro. right you, and you can grab it take one dribble toward the basket and shoot a floater that way your body's not pulled away from the basket make it too hard on yourself lamb battling again Charles got the block and now it's gonna be a foul and it will be on Charles that's a second and hobbling off a little bit is going to be David Nichols. So let's see. Hope he's going to be okay for Albany. He's going to get a breather. And Costa Anderson comes back in, number one for the Great Dates. Good show there by Charles to come up for D, and now Trey Bell Haynes into Lamb. They've been all over Lamb in this ball game. Rebound, Primo. Like the defense from Rowley, he didn't bite on the spin move. In fact, I think he knew it was coming. He stayed straight up, used his chest, and pushed Lamb back with that spin move. He had nothing left but to shoot a fadeaway. You got to give Albany a ton of defensive uh, credit there because they said, "Okay, we're not going to let Lamb beat us," and they forced him into some very tough shots today. Not, not scoring a whole lot in the paint like you normally see. Joe Primo, got to be the man now. He's got to be the guard with David Nichols out of the game. Well, you said it no points because he didn't take any shots in the first half, and now he's starting to get in rhythm now at five points here in the second frame as it's a four-point lead again for the Great Danes. Steidel. Couldn't get the roll. And a bounce to Albany when we come back. Before the game about Vermont's defense, but it's been Albany's in the second half. The body up by Rowley forces Anthony Lamb into a tough shot. These guys are plus seven on the board, so they're going to get there. And Cremo starting to warm up. It's back and it's front. 
No, really. The Triple Double Crunch Wrap Big Box is back. And it's still all mains, no sides, with the Doritos Locos Taco, a Crunchy Taco, and a Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Just five bucks, only at Taco Bell. During the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most refined models ever, including the LS, LX, and ES. Experience amazing. It isn't always easy to know where you stand financially. Multiple accounts, investments, insurance. It can leave you wondering how it all fits together. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you see your whole picture. Find out what you truly want, and then together we design a plan to go get it. There's a confidence that comes in knowing what financial security is and doing what it takes to achieve it. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. Everyone loves Taco Bell's iconic crunch wrap. And once again, we're taking that love to new heights. The one that got away is back in a big way. The bigger, beefier, triple double crunch wrap. Only at Taco Bell. Every L certified pre owned Lexus comes with an unlimited mileage L certified warranty. So you can experience all the confidence you've come to expect from a Lexus. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Horizon IndyCar Series kicks off tomorrow in St. Pete. Go get him, go get him. As the next wave of drivers push the limits against IndyCar's legends. Get clear, get out there. The countdown to the Indy 500 begins here. Way to go, buddy. Great job, great job. The Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, tomorrow at noon Eastern on ABC. We go back to 2005 for the Vermont Canamats in the final season as Tom Brennan was head coach and Taylor Coppenrath, 37 points, nine rebounds in the championship game. They went on to upset Syracuse in the NCAA tournament. They were the number one seed in the conference championship, beat Northeastern 80 to 57. Tom Brennan cutting down the nets and here he is doing national radio here today for this title game in a place where he coached from 1986 to 2005. So well known and loved here in Burlington, Vermont and beyond. Worked with us for a number of years and you go up into the stands buried in between those fans. If you could see him right there in the top left, that's Cop and Rath and on the right there, TJ Sorrentine and those two for four straight years, T.J. Sorrentin was the player of the year in 2002 in the America East, and then Coppenrath for three straight in 03, 04, 05. And that's what got it all started back in the early 2000s here in Vermont. That's what it's about, building program. They take time, and, and they take players and commitment, so it's good to see the guys coming back to support the program. And for Albany, they've been in championship positions too, so I'm sure they have a lot of alumni and a lot of support out there watching them today. What a drive by Peyton Henson and the Catamounts are within two. Second straight America East Championship game for Vermont. They lost last year to Stony Brook on the road, 80 to 74. Had to go to the CBI. They want to go to the NCAA this year. And if they can win this one here at home, Charles doing his best to not let that happen. Travis Charles. What a risky pass from Joe Primo, but I love Travis Charles stepping to the pass and to the ball. That's something he's done a terrific job of today. Big eye contact, wide stance. He's making it easy for the guards to find him. He's got 11 points. That's a charge. Oh, they're going to call it a block. Well, it's going to be on Primo. Primo can't believe it. He felt like he was in position. Let's take another look at this. Well, Primo was, yeah, he was moving top half and lower half. So yep. My mistake, that was the right call. Fight for the ball in the corner here. That's out of bounds, and it's to Albany.
It's one of those games, Brooke, where every single possession, and not that it's not important in any game, I mean, even more so today. I mean, just sustained possessions, you know, and, and the runs, there hasn't been that many runs. It's half-court offense a lot here today. Well, you feel like every time there's a tie-up, the ball's out of bounds, and wondering who it goes to, what team, it feels like that's going to set up the last shot of the game. Right. It's got that big of a feel inside this building. Nichols relocates, misses the three, Lamb for the rebound. Quickly, here's Trey Bell Haynes. Wild runner as he tried to do it all himself, and the ball is rebounded out to Nichols. It's not a contact on that play, no call. Inside Charles, he got pushed to the back by a Lamb, and the basket counts as he goes screaming all the way into the Albany bench. Charles, stay composed. A good heads up play from David Nichols to keep his composure. And then look, where are my guys? Anthony Lamb is out of position. Gets the show. That's how you want to be pulled up. The entire bench, that's what it feels like right now for Albany. Halfway through the second half, and Albany has their largest lead of the day. Six point advantage in the America East Championship game. My insurance rates are probably going to double. But, Dad, you've got... Allstate. With accident forgiveness, they guarantee your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Smart kid. Indeed. It's good to be in good hands. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra-responsive Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. Hand-cut tomatoes, fresh original dough. You'd expect those from a pizza family, but here's something you didn't see coming. Get a two-topping pan or large pizza from Papa John's, just $9.99. That's right, only $9.99. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Travis Charles, a perfect five of five from the floor. And on this play, and many others, looking so much in charge of the offense. And that's what Albany's got to do. They got to find him, give him the ball, and let him go to work in the post. Because right now, he's got five field goal attempts made. And David Nichols has five field goal attempts made as well, but has taken 15 more shots to get there. These are easy plays. These are emotional plays that can help build the momentum for your team here in the second half. Now, Brooke, they need his five for five from the field. As you and I are looking at the stats, David Nichols, one of the top players for Albany. He's their leading scorer, but he's taken 20 shots. He's five of 20. I'd say Charles needs to see it a little bit more, right? I would agree. I mean, I, with the lead, you know, they're winning this game, but I just think David Nichols would be better served to keep the big guys involved in the offense, kick it out to Primo, and when he's got his chance to score, go ahead. He's got to think in his mind. He doesn't have to do this all by himself. The last lead for Vermont was 27 to 25 late in the first half. Albany's at a 5-0 run now to take their largest lead of this game at 7. Showing zone, a 3-2 zone, but switch to man in the possession. And Vermont struggling to find a shot here. And off the side of the backboard as Duncan thought he got fouled. The shot clock is winding down again. It's just been stifling defense by Albany here. And one of the most important things John Becker said about his team was to keep them loose and to play that way. But certainly doesn't feel like it, right? Vermont, the shots tightening up, the body language telling you that Albany is taking control of this game. Yes, they are. Charles just gets called for traveling here, though. And here's the thing. Vermont is not used to being in this situation. Obviously, they've won all their America East Conference games this year, 16 and 0. First time they've ever done that in history. Just the third America East team to go undefeated in league play. And now they have to play from behind in the biggest game of the season. And Duncan misfires again. Here comes Nichols. High percentage there, and Albany has opened up a nine point advantage. 13 now for Nichols. Henson. Trey Bell Haynes. 
Uh -huh. Hoping for that one to go down. Not the case. Now the four of 18 here in the second half. And that's the kind of shot Will Brown, coach at Albany, said that he wants to see Vermont take. He will give Trey Bell Haynes that three. Primo works it in for Charles. Why not? Here comes Lamb on the double team. And he gets blocked. Special say straight up. Opportunity for the Catamount. Steidel trades a three. Big swing there for Vermont. The defensive block and the three ball. Rowley, shot clock down to three. Nichols misses, but underneath, Rowley got the offensive rebound. This is one of the strongest parts of their game. The Great Danes are plus seven on the boards for the year. A nice pass. To the corner and a wide open three, and that one no good by Devontae Campbell. Trey Bell Haynes with a spin, and there is a foul. And he'll be shooting free throws when we come back. 6.54 remaining. It's a six point lead for Albany, Vermont, trying to get going on the comeback. It's the hustle, it's the extra pass, it's the extra play, and especially the 50 50 ball. David Nichols picks it up, he finishes in transition. Playing with a lot of energy this afternoon, but Vermont, they're not ready to go away. The catch and shoot three from Steidel. 47-41, Albany. Hello? Almost didn't recognize you. Sweet new ride. Thanks. Would you get a promotion? Wait, are you our boss now? You're the boss. I'm gonna need more vacation days. Oh, can I call in sick today? Guys, I don't have that kind of power, but I can park this car with my mind. Now you're just showing off. Lease the first ever all-wheel drive Infiniti QX30 crossover at your local Infiniti retailer. Do you always put cheese and grooves in your sandwich? Of course, they're chips. Chips plus sandwich equals the perfect lunch. Oh, don't forget the pickle. It's kind of a big dill. Cheese and grooves, chips made with 100% real cheese. Dang right, it's a chip. The pension fund is being dissolved. Williamsburg payment will liquidate the funds. These banks destroyed this country and nothing ever happened to them. I want to ride that back. Here, here. Let's go get our money back. You know how to handle a gun? I serve my country. He was in the Peace Corps. We're gonna need the practice run. I've got to get away, Carl. Stop! He's gaining on us. <laughs> Look what you did to Cindy. She's looking like a Colombian drug mule. Going in style. Rated PG-13. The DQ 5 Buck Lunch is now available all day, every day. So I'm training my team to get ready. Entree. Fries. Drink Sunday. Todd. Todd. You're supposed to say it's all day, Todd. It's all day? The DQ 5 Buck Lunch. Now all day, every day. Welcome to Dairy Queen. I'm Doug Kazarian. Just a reminder, we have a MEAC championship game coming up next. Patrick Cole, conference player of the year in NC Central, getting set to face Norfolk State. Both schools looking for their second trip to the big dance. Over on ESPN, top of the hour, De'Aaron Fox and Kentucky getting set to face Alabama in the SEC semis. But let's go back to Burlington with a trip to the dance on the line. All right, Doug, thanks very much. And that is the case. And don't forget, tomorrow, Selection Sunday kicks off at 5.15 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. He'll reveal the NCAA men's field of 68 as the teams are announced. And at 7, it's Bracketology presented by Allstate. Reese and the gang, complete breakdowns of each region. That is tomorrow on Selection Sunday. Catamount fans here at Patrick Gymnasium sold out. Tickets gone in less than 20 minutes. Hoping to see the Catamounts go back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2012. Albany Brook has other ideas. They've been in this position before. 5-0 and oh in America East title games. 3-0 and oh versus Vermont, and they've won two of those three on the road right here at Patrick Chin. They've done it defensively. What they've done in the second half here to make Vermont really work for their shots especially the inside defense, the block shots. Steyer has come through. He's back in the game after picking up a couple quick fouls. And the boards again, controlled by Albany. This is 
is a team that rebounds very well. One of the best in the country. And that doesn't help the cause there. Trey Bell Haynes at the free throw line. This is a team right now for Vermont shooting 32% from the field. And it's Cremo feeding the cutter that time for Steyer doesn't go. And how many close range shots have we seen both teams right. miss today? On opportunities. Albany still shooting up 44% from the field, not bad. Inside Lamb, fouled, and it's Cremo that's going to pick up the ticket. Lamb will get two at the line for the Catamounts. Well, they'll call it actually on Steyer. So Steyer, that'll be his fourth. And Anthony Lamb has struggled a little bit today for Vermont, the rookie of the year in the America East. They rely so much on him. He's actually their leading scorer, Brooke, with 12.6 a ball game. And here are his numbers today. He's getting good looks. He's just not finishing them. I wonder what he's thinking to himself as he shoots these free throws. Closing his eyes. Dominated last game, 24 points in that 33-point win over New Hampshire on Monday night. Dre Wills back in the game. He had seven points, two assists, two big blocks in the first half, but scoreless here in the second. Four-point game. Coming up on Cremo here, and he just gets it over, and they're going to call Steidel for the foul for Vermont. We saw that work in the first half for Vermont, forcing Albany into a 10-second backcourt violation. We've got so many different looks defensively, waiting for that pack line, and all of a sudden they're going to put some pressure and extend that defense. Albany has been scoreless over the last three minutes. It's been a 5 0 Vermont run. Great Dane still on the miss that time. Campbell, but it's tracked down somehow by Rowley. And Will Brown telling his guys, hey, hold up. Let's run a set here. Keep our composure, get the shot that we want. Nichols, I don't know if that's a the shot they want, and rebound here by Dre Wills. For Trey Bell Haynes flipping over, and he's fouled. And Vermont's get a chance to cut it to two. Well, definitely not the shot you want if you're Albany. David Nichols off balance, trying to ask to get that foul. But I think his, he's great off the drive, but I think he'd be better served to dish it to an inside guy. And you see what happens if you take a bad shot. A lot of times, it's worse than a turnover, because it leads to a quick rebound and a run-out opportunity for uh, for Vermont. Been a couple of times like that for the Canamats where they've had that swing. They got a block on the defensive end, and Steidel had hit a three. Here you get a real ill-advised shot there by Nichols, and you come back, and you hope you can make good on the offensive end. And Trey Bell Haynes, the player of the year in the America East. 74% free throw shooter, and he has now made it a two-point game. Mike, coming into this game, Vermont, 99 more free throws made than their opponents. They get to the line. And the crowd starting to rise to their feet here at Patrick Gymnasium. Treble in the backcourt for Nichols. Rowley gets it over. Five of the shot clock. Campbell. Oh, and he gets bailed out as the clock was almost at zero. And the Catamount fans furious as he's going to head to the free throw line. Suffocating defense from Vermont for 29 and a half seconds. But a good job and a ball fake there from Rowley, or excuse me, from Campbell to put himself at the line. Foul is on Peyton Henson. That's his third. Well, Albany didn't panic in that possession. Did you notice? They stayed cool, got the ball inside, and it was the ball fake. And Campbell got the defense off the ground and allowed him Fortunate. to draw contact. 
what do you do different defensively if you're Vermont? You stay bodied up. You stay straight up and contest. Everyone on fans, edge here. Yeah, a lot of fans feeling like that young lady. Well, that's Both the thing. Sides. In a one-bid league like this here in the America East, you will go have a season like Vermont has 28-5, 16-0 in conference play, 20-game win streak. Yeah, for them, they feel like it's all for naught if you don't win this game. No doubt. Three-point lead. Albany's first point in the last 3.49. Nice kick out. Here's a three for the tie. Count it. Steidel. Timeout, Albany. Last time was at 27. Trey Bell Haynes to Steidel, who hit some huge threes in this one. We're tied again. These people are real BK chicken sandwich haters. The meat is very juicy, very tasty. I don't remember a Burger King chicken sandwich tasting as, as good. Because it's the new crispy chicken sandwich made with 100% white meat seasoned chicken filet, only at Burger King. I joined the Army in July of 98. I did active duty 11 years and two in the reserve. Our 18-year-old was in an accident. When I call USA, it was that voice asking me, is your daughter okay? That's where I felt relief. It actually helped to know that somebody else cared and wanted to make sure that I was okay. That was really great. We're the Rivera family, and we will be with USAA for life. USAA. We know what it means to serve. Call today to talk about your insurance needs. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra-responsive, accurate TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local accurate dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. These people are real BK chicken sandwich haters. The meat is very juicy, very tasty. I don't remember a Burger King chicken sandwich tasting as, as good. Because it's the new crispy chicken sandwich, made with 100% white meat seasoned chicken filet, only at Burger King. We're going to need some fresh new ideas, people, if we're going to take this thing to the next level, all right? Next question. Yo, what about more classic hip-hop? This, this is a dirty ball movie. You need more soul, baby. Hold up. What if the six had more Mike and Jamel? I think he's on to something. Good-looking guy, too. Look at you now. You ain't want to listen to me. Now look at you. Outside up here once again, 48 all in the America East Conference Championship. Let's go inside the play. Brooke, what do we have? Watch the defensive positioning here. You got Cremo and you've got Nichols to start. But on the pass, there's not enough help side rotation. Cremo is going to step down to try and recover for Lamb, but this has got to be Nichols to shoot out in the corner. And Will Brown talking to his guys about, hey, we cannot leave those shooters open. Albany. Got to recover more quickly on defense. And for Vermont, that was a beautiful looking shot. Exactly the kind of play you want to see. Well, this place is starting to get into it here now. Patrick Gymnasium in Burlington, Vermont, winner to the NCAA tournament. Last time for Albany was 2015. Last time for Vermont was 2012. And how about this? Vermont looking and, looking and showing a 2-3 zone, but going to switch back to man. Primo feeds it Charles, and they like that. And Charles puts him back on top. And Charles needs to get the ball. This man is a perfect six for six on the afternoon. Excuse me, I think now he's six for seven. But either way, that's a high percentage. Give the ball to number 30. Lamb inside being hounded by Rowley, and there's a foul. 
You got to go right back to this guy. I mean, I know it's been a tough afternoon shooting wise, but you know, he's their rookie of the year and he's made some plays and he's their threat inside. And they know they can still do it. He's a high percentage shooter. They're going to take their opportunities when you go to a guy like this and also draw fouls too. And Lamb's got terrific footwork and composure down in the paint. I love how he readjusts his body when he doesn't get the ball. He moves well without it. This has been a physical game. You see, look at the marks on his right yeah. arm. That's how you know it's been a good post battle. Our post players at Coastal always used to say the same thing. Look at these bruises, wow. these marks on my shoulders and arms. That's how you know I'm working hard. Lamb certainly doing that. Ties it back up at 50. Rowley gets it for Campbell. Nichols for three. Lamb skies for the rebound. Monster board from Lamb. Trey Bell Haynes for the lead for the Catamounts. Not there. Nichols has it. Coming up on three minutes to go now. Crowd is up and down, Brooke. Up and down. They're on edge here. So emotional. You can really feel it. And they're right on top of us. And you can only imagine what it sounds like to those viewers at home. Charles as the fans on a foul. No call. Shot clock again down to five. Primo. And threw it by his teammate as he was caught in a double team. Just the seventh turnover from Albany this afternoon. Both teams doing a great job of taking care of the ball. Vermont only hurt themselves three times, but that's what we expected. That's a great point. Nitty gritty type of game here today. 50 all with 2.45 to play. Charles takes a seat. You'd have to think that's going to be just for a possession or two, and this could be a defense to offense scenario for Will Brown. We've got Greg Steyer back in for Albany. Steyer had those big blocks to start the second half, so it could be the reason Will Brown put him in. I never wonder if Charles come back in on offense for Albany. Now, who wants to take a shot? That's the thing. Each team as the possession clock is going down. Trey Bell Haynes can't get the runner, and Cremo is fouled from behind. And, and he's on the floor here. He got hit right in the back and on the shoulder. What a tough kid. You see the fall that he took. Great drive from Bell Haynes. Not enough English on that one. No, Cremo got lucky. He got lucky both his ankles didn't go out from underneath him here. That was a scary moment. Lamb picks up his fourth foul for Vermont. That's his shooting arm. Let's see how that's affected. Cremo last year was the American East Rookie of the Year and also the sixth man in the league and now is a second team selection this time around in the sophomore season. And he misses. It was a one and one on the 17 foul by Vermont. Canamats with a trip back to the big dance for the first time in five years on the line. Albany's won three straight, 13, 14, 15. They want to go back to the tourney. Five seconds to shoot. And Lamb stepped out of bounds on the baseline. Albany possession under two minutes to go. We've seen this score at 50 for a minute. Neither team able to get over that hump right now. And they're hurting themselves. It's the turnovers and it's the shots that they don't want again. It's surprising to me to see Charles on the bench. Sometimes you got a very unselfish team both ways. You wonder who wants to take the shot. And there's going to be a foul or no, a timeout. Timeout taken by the Great Danes, and they'll have one remaining, 146 to go. Let's go back to that play by Land. Did he step out of bounds here? It's close. No. That's not, not close. Not even close at all, actually. Interesting. We'll be back. Wow. I'll take a lemonade. That'll be $2.37.
Your sign says a dollar. Yeah, but that doesn't include fees and added taxes. Fees and added taxes? They're all listed on your bill. Are you kidding me? There's the line access fee, the standing on my lawn fee, the fresh fruit high cost fee, the poison control surcharge. Don't pay more for taxes and fees. With T-Mobile One, taxes and fees are now included. For a limited time, get two lines of unlimited data for 100 bucks. All unlimited, all in. SEC tournament continues later today. Semifinals we have it for you on ESPN. Kentucky and Alabama. Will Alabama pull off the upset? We'll find out. The one five game and three seven with Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Championship tomorrow at one Eastern on ESPN. That's in your SEC tournament in Nashville, Tennessee. Here we're in Burlington, Vermont for the America East Conference Championship between these two rivals in Albany and Vermont. They've each won five America East Championships for the 11th time in the last 15 years. It'll be one of these two heading to the NCAA tournament. Two timeouts left for the Catamounts, one for the Great Danes, both teams in the bonus. And the possession arrow favors Vermont if we get a jump. A lot of contact here at midcourt between Nichols and Wills. No call as the ball gets into Nichols. And a steal. Lamb has it for Vermont. And now Vermont wants to tuck it over. They call a time. With one remaining now and 129 left. Fifty all here. Let's take a look at our tournament challenge resume brought to you by Acura as we look at the America East has fared in the NCAA tournament. Three wins in the last 12 seasons. Albany with a win back in 2004. Vermont, the last time they were in the tournament, and we all remember that great win versus Syracuse and TJ Sorrentine of the jumper we showed earlier, who's here in the house on the greats from the Catamounts with Taylor Coppenrath and that incredible season they had in 2005 with Tom Brennan at the helm. Well, you'd have to think both teams have a chance to get a win or two in the NCAA tournament. They got to do more, though, than score 50 points in those games. And this afternoon, you know, terrific defense on both sides. But it's going to be the offense here down the stretch. It's rebounding. It's not burning yourself, not turning the ball over to give yourself a chance to win. What do you like here on this offense possession? What would you do? I mean, I'd, I'd get it down to Lamb and let him work for it, but what I would do is give Trey, Hill, Trey Bell Haynes the ball back and see if he can catch it off a screen for another drive and dish. Well, you're right. Lamb is trying to work down low against Rowley, and now instead here is Ernie Duncan up top for Lamb as he comes up high, works his way in, and he's going to be fouled. And it's on Rowley who picks up his fourth for Albany. So they started him down low and then worked him up on a drive to the basket. So he's got that talent. He can come off the screen and grab the ball at the top of the key. And because he's so strong, he can will himself to the basket. He's got that aggressive bounce. Interesting to see him shoot these free throws right after he closes his eyes and opens them. I've never seen a player do that before. Out of Rochester, New York, the true freshman, rookie of the year in the America East. Unfazed, really. I mean, you've talked about it. He's had some easy buckets, easy looks at the basket at times today. Hasn't quite finished all that much, but has now done it here at the free throw line. He's taken it in strong, staying with his game. And a guy who's the leading scorer on this team, you're right, I love that, with the closed eyes, and he puts it up and in. 52 to 50. This is Vermont's first lead of the second half. One minute to go. Cremo battling in the post, slips through and is fouled. And it's Kurt Steidel who gets called for it. And now it's Cremo's chance for some crucial free throws here for Albany. Steyer.
Myers back in for Charles offensive defensive substitution here. Primo's battle today Brooke I mean he's their second leading scorer nowhere close to his average right now but this is the guy you want to have in the free throw line that's for sure their best free throw shooter. The well, tied at 52. He's had an effect on this game here in the second half. Yes. First half he was nowhere to be found didn't even have a field goal attempt. Vermont was down by nine in this second half. They're on a 14 to five run over the last seven minutes and we are tied here at 52. Clock at 45 seconds. Trey Bell Haynes inside count the basket and a foul. Henson converts. That's David Nichols on the ground. He's grabbing his knee, trying to get back up and fight through this. Watch the drive. He's so crafty and creative. And Henson. Heads up play. I mean, that's a wraparound pass. You have to have amazing vision to see that if you're Trey Bell Haynes. That's why he was the player of the year in the America East. Foul was on Devontae Campbell, his second, and Peyton Henson. It's been solid from the free throw line today and puts Vermont up three. Oh, but he still has a timeout. And they elect to use it here. That was the last time out. Catamounts faithful on their feet. We'll go back for the final 30 seconds. But first, let's check in with Doug in the studio. Mike, thank you very much. Another ticket on the line to the big dance. Jonathan Wade, first team all MEAC, Norfolk State, getting set to face NC Central. That's coming up next over on ESPN. Also top of the hour, Bam Adebayo, one of the outstanding freshmen to Kentucky Cats, getting set to face Alabama SEC semis. All right, so 30.2 seconds remaining here. 55-52, Brook. It is Vermont by three. Albany's out of timeouts. And you've got Nichols, who's their top scorer, but Charles, who's been real money for them inside. You're down three. Do you, you don't really need a three-pointer right here. I'd take one. What do you do? Yeah, yeah, I would take the three. I think you do need it because I don't think you want to foul Vermont, okay. put them back on the line. I think it's time to go for a three and crash the glass hard. Primo's the guy you want to see taking it. So he needs to get free off a big screen. To expect him to use. Actually, Steyer is somebody I would look to use for the screen, but he's a good rebounder. One of your best post players in the game if you're Will Brown. Campbell gets it in, and here is Primo. Hands off for Nichols. Watch him run off screens here. Primo's got it. Got it by Steidel. Takes it in, whistle, offensive foul. And Primo trying to argue that Vermont was in the charge circle. Let's see if we see any heels touch inside. Not on that angle, but let's take one more look at it. Nope, no, outside of the charge circle. Great call by the officials on that one. What a job by Peyton Henson to take that charge. Cremo's fourth personal foul with just 16.2 seconds to go. And now Albany has to foul here as they're down three. And Lamb looks to get it in. Oh, dangerous pass. It's intercepted. Here's Nichols for three in the tie. No. Nichols wants a foul to no avail. And with 9.1 seconds to go, what a crazy sequence we just saw, bro. Mike, Joe Primo was so open in the corner. He had his hands high, calling for the ball. That's who you want to shoot the three. And Nichols trying to do what he does best is make something happen for this team, take charge. Not First off, want. what is Lamb doing as he tries to go with the length of the floor of the pass? All they've got to do is just get it in, and they're going to get fouled, and he throws it away. Let's take a look at what happened here. Here's the charge first by Henson. You know, terrific setup, defensive positioning from Henson. This is what makes Vermont so good. The positioning is there. 
but the pass from Lamb, I don't know if he lost sight of Rowley or what, but Trey Bell Haynes isn't fast enough to get that ball. You see, Green Bay in the corner was open. You also had Campbell, not necessarily a three-point shooter, but it was a better-looking shot. Well, they looked to see if that was deflected, and now there's going to be a foul on Albany, and it's going to be on Nichols. Fourth on him, free throws coming for Vermont, and they could really put the hurt on here as they lead it by three and only 9.1 seconds remaining. Albany's out of timeouts. Automatic two shots at the line here for Trey Bell Haynes. Should have some free throws coming here. The officials discussing it, and they're getting everybody back. It's not over yet. Hold the celebration, they say. Ron Tyberski, Nathan Farrell, and Andrew Myra are officials. Good call and good job to keep order here, because they did have a whistle. Now they're going to go check and make sure that there was still time on the clock when the whistle was blown and Nichols, who put up the shot, was fouled. It's going to be real tough here, however, but you got to get it right. It's a four-point game, 56-52. Okay, and, and even if he was able to make both of these free throws, there's certainly not enough time right. to get a steal and a shot. You know, this game, this game's over. Pretty much over, over. yeah. Premature celebration by the arena side. They're going to have to double up once they come back for the second round. Watch this inbound again. Nichols. He gets the look. Ah, I mean, maybe at .5, tenths. If that. But how do you? .2, .3. Yeah. I agree with you. So can you imagine? Also That's checking to see if it's a three or a two in which he was fouled on as well. So well, it's definitely a three. Now. Yep. Had Trey Bell Haynes missed both of those free throws, we'd be looking at a very tight situation and here. I, and I know you got to be crazy, but we've seen crazy things happen. I mean, say this is three free throws like we think it is with time still remaining. If there's a foul there with time on the clock and say he makes him, Vermont can't get the ball in. I mean, they have a timeout, but you're just digging down the road, and that's why you've got to get this 100% right. True, but I just think the foul would be called at the very least .2 right. seconds. I mean, that's as much time as it looked to me like they would get back, and that's not enough time to get a shot. You make two free throws. You miss the third one on purpose, get a tip in. I mean, there's there are things that could happen. There really is if there's still time on the clock, and that's what the officials have to figure out. I mean, you feel like he is hit here, Brooke, and you see point two on the clock. Now, you look at the bottom corner, the official now starts to Doesn't raise, raise his, his hand. hand until it's but all what, what about the whistle being blown? I mean, that's something you can't tell there, obviously, with, with just the clock. If the whistle was blown, yeah, then he's putting his hand up, but if the whistle's blown before that, Point two on the clock still. Three free throws for Albany. He's definitely behind the line. Now, this is going to be interesting to see what they say here. 
Ron Tyberski looking at the scorer's table here, telling them there's going to be some time on the clock, it looks like. They are going to point, put 0.3 seconds back on the clock here. This is not over. David Nichols is going to have three free throws. There's going to be 0.3 seconds on the clock. And that's what you need to get a shot off. Now, again, we've thought of a scenario where if he hits the first two, they can miss on purpose and try to get a tip in. That would be probably your best bet. I think that's what you have to do. this game to overtime. That's yeah. what you have to do. It's the only way Albany will give themselves enough time to stay in this game. We'll take one more look at it. And Nichols off the screen from Steyer. All right, so Nathan Farrell just told us here, he said, foul shooting the three, 0.3 seconds remain on the clock. And here is David Nichols, who's an 84% free throw shooter on the season, his first trip to the free throw line here today. Well, Will Brown, says, boy, we had a chance here. We had some hope. Well, Vermont, all they had to do was let the three-point shot go. And now you, you've got to make this and then hopefully stop them from trying to get the ball in bounds. I mean, you, you have to get a steel tip in yeah. with point three. There's, there's no other scenario that would work. They miss it. That's it. Let the celebration begin in Burlington, Vermont. The Catamounts are heading back to the NCAA Tournament, the 2017 America East Tournament Champions. Vermont back to the big dance for the first time since 2012. Coming up right now, the MEAC Championship, Norfolk State and NC Central.